What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15 beta 8 to register developers about a week after the release of beta 7 and for public beta testers, you should be seeing beta 8 very, very soon. Last week for beta 7, it released to developers and to public beta testers on the same day. So I would expect the same here for this release, either today or tomorrow. So in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15 beta 8, watchOS 8 beta 8, and tvOS 15 beta 8. And meanwhile, for macOS, we are on a whole other schedule over there. So we just got macOS Monterey beta 6 yesterday on Monday. So it's running a little behind the other software updates, but we should be seeing beta 7 and beta 8 in the coming weeks. It's likely going to be released to the public after all the other software versions are released. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 8 and what is new. So let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update. So you can see here, it came in at 529.1 megabytes on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which of course came from beta 7, but that size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from. So if we go to our settings now and go to general about, 15.0, you can see the build for this release is 19A5340A. So once again, just as predicted last week, we got another A at the end of this build number, and it's looking like we're getting very close to an RC build. And then if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that remains at 2.09.10, which is the same as beta 6, actually. So we have not had a modem update and a couple of betas. So now what's new here in beta 8? And this is going to be yet another bug fix update. And I mentioned this last week, we're not going to be expecting any new features or changes really at all in these last couple of betas. So, you know, if you look at the release notes for beta 8, it only shows a bunch of known issues and actually not a single resolved issue is shown in the release notes this time. So the bug fixes will be for us to find out. And one that I had in beta 7 was an issue with Safari where when I opened it or sometimes when I would go into a different tab, it would just reload every single time. Even if I just went into that tab and then went out of it, it would just reload. So it seems like there are some memory issues going on here. Not sure if it's just like RAM issues or what, but there does seem to be an issue with tabs reloading constantly here in Safari. So I'm not sure if this is fixed yet in beta 8, but myself and others have had this issue where tabs are just randomly refresh. So hopefully that is fixed and I will let you guys know in my follow-up video because right now it appears to be fixed, but it's too early to tell just yet. Now, one bug that has been resolved here in beta 8 has to do with messages. So in beta 7, I had a lot of issues with messages. Basically when I would go and tap on an image that was sent to me and then I went back, the text box right here would just disappear and it would just be a blank space right there and I'd have to go out of the message and back into it. But in beta 8, that appears to be fixed. I've tried several times to reproduce it. You can see there, it's still a little bit laggy. You can see that there's still some lag there, but it does appear to be fixed, at least that part of the bug. And inside of our iCloud settings, you can see here that private relay still shows as being in beta. So you can see there it shows beta both times and it basically just says how it may not perform properly as it is in beta. And Apple actually mentioned in beta 7 that this is going to stay in beta even once iOS 15 is released to the public. So if you missed that, that is one thing to note. Now, as far as Twitter crashing goes, that appears to be fixed here in beta 8, but it's not just beta 8. It's also a combination of the Twitter application being updated. So if you installed the update, the latest update from Twitter and beta 8, you should not have any issues with Twitter crashing. At least for me, I've not had a single crash since that. But if you guys have, let me know in a comment down below. But it appears that the Twitter crashing may have finally been fixed here in this eighth beta right before the final release of iOS 15. But as far as the banking applications, some are still not working properly, mine included. So my banking application is still not working. It does not register my face ID. It doesn't even allow me to use face ID or touch ID. So that is an issue. And again, I'm guessing that it's not going to be fixed until iOS 15 gets released to the public because that's likely when they will push out an update for it in the app store but some people are not having any issues with banking applications and just consider yourself lucky but as far as anything else here in beta 8 there's really nothing else to talk about i mean it's a very very minor update i mean beta 7 was very minor and beta 8 you know with no resolved issues mentioned in the release notes at all and nothing really added in terms of visual features 
you know, there's not too much to talk about here with beta eight. So again, there are going to be bug fixes. It is an A at the end of the build number, which means we should have, you know, more stable of a software and, you know, things overall are going to run better. Things are going to crash less like Twitter and things like that. But overall, it's a very, very minor update. So there are still some bugs that I did want to mention that I was facing in beta seven. Hopefully beta eight fixes them. But again, Apple did not mention any resolved issues. So it's hard to tell just yet. But one issue I consistently had in beta seven is where the contact photos and messages would just simply not show up. You can see it just showed up as a little gray circle there. It happened twice for the same contact and that would consistently happen. And these are not new contacts or anything like that. It just continuously happened. So I've been having a lot of issues with messages, especially when you're in a group chat. It seems like the contact photos are having issues and sometimes phone numbers show up instead of the contact name as well. But it's mainly only in these group messages. I also had this issue here in beta seven, you can see here that the notifications kind of overlap in the notification center. So I believe I had this in like beta two and it went away all the way up until just a couple of days ago here on beta seven. So there is still an issue with notifications overlapping in the notification center. And then I also recorded this little screen recording here where the spotlight search was just simply not working at all. So you can see there, I would type in something. I would even type in the entire app and it just simply would not show anything under Siri suggestions. And then eventually it would work after a while, but it would be, you know, very laggy and just not work all the time. So there were issues in spotlight search here and at beta seven as well. So that was actually just, you know, last night, right before beta eight came out. So hopefully those issues will be addressed here in beta eight. And I will let you guys know if they are in my follow up video this weekend. And then also some people are having issues with AirPods just randomly disconnecting and just having overall connection issues. But me personally, I've not had any issues with my AirPods at all my AirPods Pro or my AirPods Max. I've had absolutely no issues with connectivity. So if you are having that, let me know in a comment down below if it has been fixed, because I can't test that because I never had that issue on beta seven. Now, as far as performance goes on beta seven, it was really good. And I didn't really have any issues at all besides the minor bugs that I mentioned a moment ago with the messages, the notification center and the spotlight search, and sometimes in Safari, but they're very, very minor bugs and really nothing that impacts me on a day to day basis. So overall, the performance was great in beta seven. And I would expect beta eight to be probably the same. Honestly, we have the same you know, build number, just three builds ahead here for beta eight. So the performance is probably going to be very, very similar, but we may just have some additional bug fixes, which is going to be nice and make it feel like more of a stable release. And as far as the Geekbench scores go, you can see here, we got a 1605 on the single core and a 4134 on the multi-core and beta eight compared to beta seven, where we got a 1597 and a 4159. So an increase in the single core score, but a slight decrease and the multi-core score right there. So interesting results. Of course, those are not always indicative of the actual performance, but it is always fun to see, you know, how these score up against each other. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life on beta seven was about the same as beta six for me, which of course is a good thing, but beta eight could be an update that finally addresses battery drain issues for some people. So me personally, I don't have any battery drain issues. My battery life is actually really good right now. So I would expect beta eight to be about the same as it has been for the past couple of betas, if not a little bit better. And of course, like usual, I will report back this weekend in the follow-up video with how that performance has been here on beta eight. So now what is next for Apple? So today is August 31st, the final day of August and tomorrow starts September, which is going to be, of course, the big month for Apple, where we will see an Apple event, the new iPhones, and of course, all of the new software, including iOS 15. So what can we expect to see leading up to the release of iOS 15? And I think that next week, the week of the sixth, is when we should see an RC build of iOS 15 released to developers and to public beta testers. So the RCs could really come out on any day. So really any time from the 6th until the 9th would be my opinion. Now, if we do see an RC on like the 6th, then we could actually see an RC2 later on in the week before the final release, which should be on the week of the 13th. So sometime probably between the 13th and the 15th is when we will see iOS 15 released to everybody. So my guess is going to be the 15th, just because I would like to see iOS 15 released on the 15th. I think it would be cool and it would make sense, but uh, let me know what you guys think. You think it's going to be released on the 14th, the 15th or some other time. Let me know in a comment down below 
know it's always fun to kind of predict when apple is going to release this software but that is my guess i'm going to guess the 15th but it could be any time on the week of the 13th but yeah guys there you have it that is ios 15 beta 8 really not too much going on here it is just kind of a final bug fix update before we get the rc build in our hands so let me know what you guys think about ios 15 beta 8 down in the comments below and if you found anything let me know in a comment below as well because there's really not too much you know forward facing for this release so it is available now again for developers and for public beta testers so go ahead and download it and let me know your thoughts and of course i will see you guys this weekend in my follow-up video but if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course make sure you subscribe for a lot more ios 15 coverage coming very very soon but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon